Hello students, welcome to your favorite PW Golf. I am Tanya and yes, I am back with one more one shot that is your ultimate recap of the chapter work and energy. So yes, my students, those who are there in class 9th, this is your fourth chapter that is work and energy. I will be talking about each and every concept and certainly give you the brief of the whole chapter with questions. So, without any further ado, take out a paper and pencil and certainly I start with the basic of your chapter that is nothing but all of you work and energy. Right? So, yes, this chapter is divided into two parts. One part, the wholly and solely work, what exactly it's SI on it, yeah, what are the types of work and the rest of the part who talk about energy, types of energy, deriving some of the types of energy and guess lastly we are going to talk about power. So everyone let's start with the first thing that is your question. So now before talking on work there is a scenario I want you all to ponder upon. See here there is Ali. Ali is pushing a wall. Have a look over here. Ali is trying really really hard like for 2 hour, 3 hour he is trying to push the wall but the wall over here is not moving. Right. So, I am asking a question. Everyone, Ali is pushing a wall. Is he doing work? I am asking this question to all of you. Options are here. I want you all to share your answer there in the comment and certainly think that Ali is doing work. Now, if I say and look in the scenario that okay, here wall is not moving but Ali is getting tired. So, I will say okay, Ali is doing work. So, let's say that okay. Yes, Ali is doing work. Yeah, but there are some of the students those who are going to actually think and they are going to put a logic over here that as the wall is not moving. So, here if I will say Ali is doing work, that is a bit of contradictory statement. So, some of you, you are going to say that no ma'am, no Ali is not doing any work and the rest of the kids they are going to say maybe he is doing maybe he is not doing work. So now here we are going to understand in terms of science, in terms of physics that whether Ali is doing some work or not. So everyone here if I say you know in my humanly ground manner or if I talk about in the human sense I will say okay Ali is getting tired as he is getting tired so certainly he is doing work. Right. But in terms of science, in terms of physics, we are being very, very particular. Over here, as the wall is not moving, everyone, as the wall is not moving, certainly we are going to say no work is done. Be it 3 hour, be it 4 hour, be it 20 hour. Yes, wall is not moving. Of course, Ali is not doing any work. You are going to specify here that yes, in order to talk about work being done, yes, there should be some movement taking place. The object should move. The object should cover a particular distance. The object should undergo displacement. Alright, so here the correct answer will be no, Ali is not doing any work. Why so? Because yes, for work done, there should be some movement taking place. The object should move a bit. There should be some displacement. So here the answer will be no work is done. Okay, so now you can ask me that okay, here if you are starting right and you are sitting. Yeah, similar way if I will say that, okay, there is a boy who is sitting on a chair. Is he doing any work? He is sitting on a chair and studying, continuously studying for 3 hours, 4 hours. Is he doing any work? Over there also you are going to say no work is done. Why so? Because yes, he is sitting, no displacement, no distance in a particular direction being covered by the boy and certainly his mental analysis has been done. Moreover, he is putting in all of his, you know, mental part. Yeah, so emotional, mental, all of these things we are not going to consider whenever we are going to talk about work done in physics. Okay, everyone, so work done will play a very important role when, when you are going to talk about only one thing that is in terms of physics. Okay, so let's have a word on work done. Everyone, so now what exactly work is? Work is nothing but yes, when force is applied 
and it produces motion. For example, if I am having a box and I am pushing the box with the F amount of force. Right? Now, by applying the force, I saw that my this particular box is covering a displacement. Have a look over here. So, force applied on the box and the box is covering a bit of displacement or you can say box is covering a distance in the direction of force. You are going to say work is done because you can see box moving, changing the position, motion. Alright, so in simple terms you can say work done is nothing but force into distance or you want to be, see here, distance you are saying, right, direction is important over here. Alright, so yes, distance covered in the direction of force or in the opposite direction of force that matters. If you want, you can use the formula work done is equal to force into displacement. Whichever way is comfortable to you. Alright. So, two factors are very, very important whenever you are going to talk about work. That is, first, first one would be force. Second one would be displacement or distance in a particular direction. That is important. Alright, everyone. So, if I talk about the work done by a force on a body depends on the magnitude of the force. Okay, secondly, the direction certainly here have a look distance through which the body moves in the direction of force. Yeah, so here it is nothing but displacement only. Let's see. Okay. So, the formula will be work is equal to force into distance or work is equal to force into displacement. If you are taking distance over here, direction you have to have a look upon. Yeah. Now, if I talk about work done over here, yes, in all, you should be very, very clear. Direction doesn't matter. For work, direction doesn't matter. Alright, so I am saying in order to talk about work done, I am only concerned with the magnitude, how much work is done. I am not concerned in which direction work is done. So, you can say work done will be a scalar quantity. Alright. Now, without units will our life work? No, right? So, of course, we are going to talk about the unit. Everyone, let's talk about the unit here. So, the basic unit, the SI unit of work done is nothing but the joule. Capital J will be the symbol. Alright? But from the formula, you are going to get another unit that is work is equals to force into, let's say, distance. Yeah. SI unit of force, Newton. SI unit of distance meter. So, Newton meter. Okay. So, two basic units we have. First one is the SI one that is joule. That would be equal to Newton meter only that you got from the formula. Yeah. Now, if someone will ask you that, okay, how this one joule would be equal to Newton meter? How this, uh, uh, you know, instance is taking place? So, let me have a look over here. Okay. So, let me show you as well. Yeah. So, here have a look everyone. If I say work done is force into distance. Yeah, let's say distance by far now. Yeah, SI unit of work done is joule. SI unit of force is newton. SI unit of distance is meter. So, what would be one joule? How you are going to define one joule? Kids, one joule is nothing but when you will apply one newton of force. Okay. And the object will move 1 meter. 1 meter distance is covered by the object. Have a look over here. If I am applying, in this case only, if I will apply 1 newton of force and my object is getting displaced or covering a distance of 1 meter, I will say certainly 1 joule of work is done, which would be equal to 1 newton meter. Okay? This is the basic scenario. Yeah, SI form. Have a look. The basic scenario, the SI form. 1 joule is equal to 1 newton meter. Okay? So, in the formula, certainly here the thing plays a very, very important role. Yeah? Now, let's talk about CGS unit also. The full form of CGS, everyone, the full form of CGS will be centimeter, gram, second, all right, so centimeter gram second, the CGS unit of work is erg. From the formula, 
from the formula you can get what you can get from the formula cgs unit of force dyne cgs unit of distance centimeter so of course from the formula i am getting dyne centimeter okay cgs unit for example if i say 1 meter meter is nothing but the si unit of length cgs unit of length centimeter similar way cgs unit of work arg that would be equal to dyne centimeter only okay now let's have a look on the question so yes everyone let's have a look at the question a body when acted upon by a force of 10 newton gets displaced by 0.5 meter calculate the work done i want all of you to do this question this would be better for you for your understanding right see here have a look do the question share your answers with me in the comment section i would love to have a look on to it okay but yes here let me solve work done is force into displacement Di uh, if you are taking distance everyone distance in the direction of force or so direction should be important okay now so force is 10 newton displaced 0.5 meter have a look 10 yeah into 5 by 10 cancelling out 5 joule this is the work done b is the perfect answer okay pretty much easy question right now let's have a look on the types of work done everyone we have four types of work done let's start with the first one that is positive where the force acting and the body covering a particular displacement or the distance is the same have a look so positive work done where the direction of force and the body getting displaced are same okay then we have negative work done negative work done will be force and the object covering a particular displacement or distance are opposite so negative work done okay then we have zero work done in zero work done my force will be acted upon the displacement right or distance being covered at 90 degree see 90 degree angle all right 90 degree and the fourth one the last one is whenever force is acting upon right and acting at a particular angle yeah so the normal scenario okay so now let me give you a small hint here everyone when you talk about the positive work done yes here very very important thing you know the formula work done is nothing but force into displacement or let's say distance right let me add something over here cos theta now from where this cos theta came into picture what is this cos theta i believe some of you you are aware about trigonometry right and the small tiny angles so yes over here we need to take up i know this is not of your standard but yes i am giving you a small hint over here okay so here we are going to take up the angle also between force and displacement okay so have a look over here you will only tell me see this is the force and this is the displacement if i will draw this condition na properly so it will look like force and displacement also over here only so angle between force and displacement over here the theta theta is nothing but the angle is zero okay now over here angle between force and displacement draw it properly like this see force and displacement how much is the angle theta is 180 over here i told you force and displacement they are at 90 degree and in this scenario theta can be anything 30 60 45 20 anything all right so yes you have to keep into account that whenever you are using the formula you can use work is equals to force into displacement or distance with the particular direction that is fine but certainly angle cos theta also matters a lot yeah now one by one let's have a look on the cases So first one is positive work done. As I told you, kids, what is positive work done? Let us take up an example. I am pushing the table, and the table is also moving in my favorable direction. For example, have a look. This is my table. Okay, that's my table. Yeah. 
I am applying force on the table. Let's say I'm applying the force that's uh, 20 Newton. Okay. And the table is also moving in my favorable direction only in which direction, you know, in the direction I want the table to move. It is covering a displacement of 10 meter. So, first of all, have a look over here. Ma'am, work done is nothing but positive. Right? How? Because the direction of force and displacement or distance in a particular direction is same. Right? So, yeah, positive work would be done. Okay? So, the ones who are getting confused that, ma'am, I don't understand theta. You understand like this. Same direction, same direction. Positive work done. Okay? The formula will be work is equals to force into displacement. Okay? Directly. Directly use this. Okay, now my curious ones, those who are very, very curious and those who want to understand the whole thing in a better manner. For you, everyone, there are three values you should know. What are the three values? Cos 0 is 1. Cos 180 is minus 1. Cos 90 is 0. Three values you should know. Alright, although there is a particular table, but I am giving a small gist. Yeah, now let me show you the table condition. This is my table. Alright, I am applying a force of 20 Newton. My table is covering a displacement of 10 meter. They are asking me about the work done. Okay. The kids, those who are preferring the easy portion, of course, they will directly say, ma'am, positive work done. They will say, ma'am, positive work done. And by using the simple formula, they will find out the answer. That is 20 into 10, 200 Joule. Okay. But the ones those who want to have their concept right for you, everyone, of course, you are going to say, ma'am, in this condition, Force into displacement cos theta, the actual, uh, no, the actual formula we are going to use. Okay, now, ma'am, theta, angle between force and displacement, draw. This is the force and this one would be the displacement. So, how much is the angle? How much is the theta? Well, theta is coming out to be zero. Okay, so now let me place the things that I know. So, force is 20 Newton. Displacement is 10 meter and I know cos theta, cos 0 degree. Theta is 0, no? Cos 0 is a 1. So, what I will do in place of cos 0, I will write down 1. So, 20 into 10 into 1. What is the answer, everyone? 200 Joule. Now, work done is, ma'am, positive. I can see positive. Right? No need to memorize anything. Why work done is positive? Now, force and displacement, they are in the same direction. Angle between force and displacement is 0 degree. That is why work done is positive. Am I clear, everyone? Pretty much easy. Right? So, how you can get a positive work done and how you can use the actual general formula? You want to use the basic one? You can. Okay? Let's move ahead with negative work done. In negative work done, everyone, yes, here, the Angle between force and displacement will be 180 degree. How this is possible? You know about tug of war, right? In tug of war, what will happen? Yeah, if the other team is winning, they are going to drag me, right? So, let me say that, okay, there is some tug of war happening or friction example you can take. Friction will always act in the opposite direction. Frictional force will al always act in the opposite direction of a body moving. Right. So, what will happen? Certainly, let's say this is a ball and friction is acting onto it. Okay. This is friction. Now, the ball is covering a displacement of, let's say, 4 meter and friction amount, let's say, it's uh, 100 Newton. Okay. So, can you see friction is acting in the opposite direction, but the ball is moving in the opposite direction of the friction. So, here, yes, the direction of force, direction of displacement, they are opposite with each other. So, what you are going to say, opposite direction will lead to negative work done. Okay. Your formula will be 
माइनस फोर्स इंटू डिस्प्लेसमेंट दोज हु वॉन्ट टू स्टडी एंड दोज हू वॉन्ट टू लर्न द थिंग्स अब डायरेक्टली दिस इज फॉर यू दोज हु वॉन्ट टू गेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफकोर्स आई विल एक्सप्लेन राइट यू कैन डायरेक्टली डायरेक्टली यूज फोर्स इंटू डिस्प्लेसमेंट विद अगेटिव साइन दैट सेट नेगेटिव वर्क दैट बिकॉज डायरेक्शन इज ऑपोजिट या नाउ फॉर द कॉन्सेप्ट बिल्डिंग पर्पज लेट्स टॉक अबाउट बॉल ओनली राइट दिस इज फ्रिक्शन दैट वुड बी फिफ्टी न्यूटन बॉल कवरिंग अ डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ फाइव मीटर ओके नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स राइट एंड डायरेक्शन ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट दे आर ऑपोजिट एस और नो ऑपोजिट राइट फिफ्टी न्यूटन एंड दिस इज फाइव मीटर ऑपोजिट नाउ फॉर्मूला द एक्चुअल फॉर्मूला इज फोर्स इंटू डिस्प्लेसमेंट कॉस थीटा फोर्स आई नो डिस्प्लेसमेंट आई नो वट इज द एंगल बिटवीन फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट लुक वन एटी थीटा इज हाउ मच वन एटी ऑल राइट नाउ प्लेस द वैल्यूज यू नो फिफ्टी न्यूटन इंटू फाइव मीटर इंटू कॉस वन एटी डिग्री कॉस वन एटी वैल्यू आई टोल्ड यू माइनस वन राइट सो ओवर यो हाउ मच टू फिफ्टी इंटू माइनस वन माइनस टू फिफ्टी जूल विल बी द वर्क डन डायरेक्टली यू वॉन्ट टू सी डायरेक्टली यू कैन से ना वर्क डन इज माइनस फोर्स इंटू डिस्प्लेसमेंट माइनस फिफ्टी इंटू फाइव अगेन माइनस टू फिफ्टी जूल सो एनी वन ऑफ द टू यू कैन यूज ओनली थिंग इज आई एम गिविंग यू द कॉन्सेप्ट एज वेल एनी ऑफ द टू आई एम राइटिंग डाउन और एज वेल ओवर या any of the two formula you can use you can either learn it directly or you want to have the concept you can have a look on the concept directly okay now let's talk about zero work done get okay, zero work done uh, can have three cases first will be when force is zero right then also work done will be zero when displacement is zero then also work done is zero the wall case right and the third one would be when the angle is 90 degree angle between force and displacement or the particular distance okay so imagine that okay there is a trunk in your hand you are holding the trunk right and the bus is moving you are standing in a bus and the bus is moving so over here the force acting on the trunk is only its weight trunk bus is moving covering a displacement of let's say 2 meter okay so the force acting on the trunk is only its weight yeah have a look the angle between this weight weight is nothing but a force only no the angle between force and displacement is how much 90 degree right so as the angle between weight and the force is weight and the displacement is 90 degree we know cos theta and cos 90 will always be zero so work done will be zero similar way when you are carrying your bag to school so yes you are doing zero work done although you are covering a displacement and the distance particularly scenario over there yeah but certainly over there you are going to say okay the work done is zero why so because yes the bag the on the bag the force that is acting at that particular time is nothing but your weight okay and weight is acting upon the distance or so particularly over here displacement let me say at 90 degree angle right so the porters those who carry our bags from the railway stations yeah they are going to keep our bags on to their head and then move so the logically in terms of science in terms of physics they are doing zero work done why so because only weight is acting more over they are covering a distance so force into displacement into cos theta where 90 degree angle between force and the displacement that is 90 so for them work done is zero yet you have to pay some amount to them okay so everyone clear with the zero zero work done also now let's have a question a car to pulls up a car of mass 500 kg to a distance of 4 meter calculate the work done by the cart so what this cart is doing this cart is pulling the car okay and the car is getting pulled up 
right so work done is force into displacement or the distance certainly over here now for angle if you have to take up the angle over here if the angle is not mentioned certainly you can take up a normal scenario okay else they are going to mention that okay in the opposite direction see to a distance of 4 meter okay, calculate the uh, uh, work done by the cart okay so now i don't have force how will i find out force you know acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square yeah force is mass into acceleration due to gravity into the distance so mass is 500 acceleration due to gravity is 10 and the distance is 4 okay now 5000 into 4 that will give you 20000 joule this is the work done pretty much easy these are the questions only that will come in the exam okay next thing now let's talk about energy everyone energy is nothing but capacity or capability to do a task for example if i will ask you how much energy you have right now so you cannot measure it right but if you will ask me that how much energy ma'am you are having right now so i will give you only one simple answer that the energy that i have right now is that i can run 500 kilometer so I, or i can take five more classes or i can certainly you know run a marathon so everyone whenever i'm talking about energy i am telling you about the ability of work i can do so energy is nothing but capacity or capability to perform a task to do some work that is your energy energy term itself means activity or operation so whenever we talk about energy now we are actually specifying that yes energy is the ability capability to perform work i can run a 500 kilometer race that much energy i have i am telling you how much work i can do okay so energy in simple terms is nothing but the amount of task or the ability capability to perform some work right energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be transformed from one form to another transformation you can see around you but yes creation is not possible although when we talk about the si unit the si unit of energy is nothing but joule capital j will be the symbol so we have various types of energy like mechanical energy of course we have electrical light thermal nuclear of course there are ample of types of energy around you there are some basic type of energy that we are going to talk about so let's start with the first one that is kinetic the term kinin itself means motion kinetic no has been taken up from kinin itself right motion so energy possessed by a moving body or body in motion you are going to state that as kinetic energy so yes energy possessed by a body whenever it is in motion car moving bow over here a uh, bow is not moving the arrow moving right of course when you are walking when any any object that is in motion it will possess your kinetic energy only okay kinetic energy depends upon two factors one is mass the other one is velocity so the formula will be half into mass into velocity square this is the formula for kinetic energy okay si unit as it is kinetic energy only si unit will be joule okay so half into mass into velocity square that is the formula now more will be the mass more will be the kinetic energy right because it is directly depending upon it more will be the velocity more will be the kinetic energy only case over here is in this case when velocity is same yeah and in this case when mass is same now let me show you something that how i got this formula okay everyone you know the work done formula that is force into displacement all right perfect now please remember work done and energy they are being interchangeably used so you can use them interchangeably right so please don't get confused in that part now in the place of uh, force can i write down mass into acceleration body moving no kinetic energy motion is there so acceleration right in the place of this 
let's say uh, distance or particularly if I know if I take up the scenario of displacement yeah you remember v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s from this from a third equation of motion I can take up s as v square minus u square by 2 a will that be fine okay place it over here dump it over here mass is nothing but v square right a into s sorry a all right 2 a minus u square by 2 a all right cancel out the a and a how what you got mass v square minus mass u square whole by 2 separate it mass of v square by 2 minus mass of u square by 2 this is nothing but the work energy theorem you are going to study about this thing in class 11th as well but yeah you will be using this formula also for your numerical very important formula okay now if i tell you for kinetic energy we are concerned with body moving or body at rest body moving no so i can say i am not concerned with initial velocity take initial velocity as zero take u as zero so what will happen this term will remove na m v square minus by 2 minus 0 all right work done is nothing but energy specifically you are talking about kinetic energy right so yeah you got the formula of kinetic energy half m v square okay in this case in this case no in this uh, table one uh, formula you can also write down kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial Okay, that's nothing but the work energy theorem. All right, everyone. Yeah, so basically what we are talking about, we, are, we got the formula of kinetic energy. We derived the formula of kinetic energy. All right. Now, if I tell you that, okay, similar way we have another that is potential energy. Potential energy is only concerned with the configuration or the position. Okay, now over here, you have to talk about that, okay, where it is kept, right? If I am keeping a book at the first floor, if I am keeping the book at the third floor, both of these books, they are going to store some amount of energy in them because of the height or because of the position they are kept at. But certainly, the potential energy, right? These are the two books. The potential energy at third floor will be more than the first floor. Why so? Because of the position, because of the position they are kept at. Alright? So, potential energy is nothing but the energy which is stored by an object due to its position where it is actually kept at. So, that position matters a lot. So, everyone, yes, you have to take up a reference point basically and generally we take up the reference point ground only. Na? Ground would only be our reference point. Okay, so ground level we take, okay, that is the height zero, then we are going to increase. Alright, everyone, so the formula comes out to be, have a look, when it is considered in terms of height above the ground level of earth, see ground level. Okay, so yes, here it is called as gravitational potential energy when you are going to talk about the ground level itself. Okay, so the formula is mass into acceleration due to gravity into height, mass into acceleration due to gravity into height okay mgh mgh si unit si unit will be same joule all right now we are going to have a look upon that how i got this formula right Potential energy is depending upon mass. Potential energy is depending upon height. Acceleration due to gravity, basically, you are going to take up as 10 or 9.8 meter per second square. Yeah. Okay. Change in the shape arises, right? That also, uh, see, when you have a bow and you are going to stretch the bow, what happens? There is a change in the shape of the bow, right? What is happening? But the moment you are stretching the bow, no. Yes, it is storing some amount of potential energy onto it. Yeah, and that potential energy will be transferred to the arrow when the arrow will start to move. Okay, transformation also taking place. Yeah, so let me just give you the whole case over here. 
वर्क डन इज नथिंग बट फोर्स इन टू डिसमेंट All right. There was a box initially kept on the ground floor. I am taking the box up at a particular height. Okay. So everyone, displacement over here will be nothing but height. Okay. The box has been moved up. So force over here. Can I write it down like mass into acceleration due to gravity? Right. Acceleration due to gravity is working on it. Right. No acceleration as such. No motion. Okay. Then place of displacement can i write down height you got the formula work done is nothing but the energy and over here we are talking about gravitational potential energy or potential energy derived simple okay keeping the thing simple and as simple as possible all right now everyone if in this case only i will tell you that how my potential energy is depending upon mass let me give you a small hint okay there are two books kept at a height of let's say uh, 3 meter one book is 3 kg the other book is 1 kg find out the potential energy in both the book book a and book b i want all of you to do this also okay whatever questions i gave you you have to do it yeah so potential energy in a will be mass into acceleration due to gravity into height here potential energy will be mass into acceleration due to gravity into height okay 1 into 10 into 3 that will give you 30 joule okay over here 3 into 3 into 10 that will give you 90 joule everyone height was same but mass was different so more the mass more the potential energy okay similar way if i tell you one is kept at 1 meter okay the other one is kept at 5 meter both had 1 kg books potential energy at a will be nothing but 10 joule potential energy at b will be nothing but 50 joule yeah mgh formula have a look so more the height more the potential energy so yes my potential energy is depending upon mass height certainly acceleration to gravity it is going to vary it is not going to vary as such there no equator and pole that difference usually take place okay but certainly we take it up uh, as 10 only Until unless a change is given. Okay, now taking up this thing, and we are going to talk about law of conservation of energy. Everyone around us, yes, energy can be transferred one form to another. Transformation is only possible. Yes, creation and destroying is not possible. So the law states, yes, very important that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. Conversion is only possible. Chemical energy to light energy, light energy to heat energy, chemical energy to mechanical energy, mechanical energy to kinetic energy, kinetic energy to potential energy. That change is only possible. Destroying and creation is not possible. Okay. So when we say in other words, total energy in the universe, right? When the universe was created, right? And now. of course it is same only thing is if that point of time no there was some let's say uh, 5 million kilo joule of uh, heat energy was there now that energy is transformed into various other forms but the, the total is same total is still the same okay so in other words the total energy in the universe is constant and is divided in many other forms which are interchangeably connected with work done so yes total is still the same yeah only thing is they have been transformed and converted into various forms so when we say and also there is another scenario okay so for the der derivation over here yes we say total mechanical energy or total energy is nothing but kinetic energy plus potential energy you are going to talk about this case as well mechanical energy right so in this particular case also yeah i will show you that how in this particular scenario when a stone is actually falling from a height to ground level how its potential and kinetic energy right they are getting transformed from one form to another but the total would remain the same okay so let's see have a look over in the first case everyone in the first case if i write down okay here potential energy is zero kinetic energy is 10 ओके सर पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज 10 काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज 0 या सो टोटल एनर्जी विल बी 10 जूल 
all right now have a look as it is moving down so everyone the height is getting decreased what will happen potential energy is nothing but mass into acceleration due to gravity into height so height is getting decreased potential energy will decrease okay as it started to move what will happen velocity will increase so kinetic energy will increase right so in the next case in the b scenario you can see yeah in the b case everyone potential energy is coming out to be your 8 and kinetic energy is coming out to be 2 total is again 10 joule have a look the loss that is taking place in potential that much amount of gain is done in kinetic so can you see the change taking place the conversion the transformation taking place okay of course i will be having a word on this thing in a better manner as well right now i just wanted to give you a small gist okay then again see six to four potential energy is turning out to be six and uh, kinetic energy okay let me not write it down over here else it will create confusion yeah potential energy is coming out to be six kinetic energy is turning out to be four total is again the same and at last of course when my stone is going to be here at the ground right at the ground let's say the last case right the e case i believe right potential energy is zero why because it has it is at the ground okay ground is the my reference point where height is zero okay and kinetic energy will be nothing but the total that is 10 why so because it has gained velocity okay mass is remaining same mass is remaining same stone only all right everyone so certainly when we talk about basic a basic derivation of basic scenario that how this transformation how the law of conservation of energy holds it true all right now let's talk about a basic simple thing that is nothing but power everyone when we talk about power power is in simple terms you will say how much work is done or rate of doing work okay quickly you are able to do the work certainly uh, you know lesser the time more the power okay of course when you talk about rate of doing work in simple scenario power would be work done upon time lesser the time you will take more the power more the time lesser the power okay so rate of doing work is nothing but power si unit of power is nothing but what and one watt will be nothing but equal to one joule by one second one joule per second how one joule per second si unit of work done joule time second okay so one watt is nothing but the power one watt is nothing but the power when one joule of work is done in one second when one joule of work would be done in one particular second okay so now if i want to talk about you know higher power of course you can talk about kilowatt kilowatt would be nothing but one kilowatt would be nothing but thousand watt one kilowatt would be nothing but thousand watt sim similar way right kw this is how you are going to represent it okay so rate of doing work how much work you are able to do lesser time if you are taking lesser time to do a particular task more power okay now in this way only if i talk about commercial unit of energy everyone commercial unit yes this is the unit that we use in our you know i would say electrical uh, uh, the power house is basically right over the commercial means from which you are making money yeah so commercial unit of energy is nothing but one kilowatt hour everyone I hope you remember the formula. Power is nothing but work done upon time. In place of work done, can I write down energy? Interchangeably used by time into power uh, is equal to power. Okay. So, energy will be power into time. This is the formula. Commercial unit of energy. All right. Now, SI unit. How you are going to get the SI unit? Yes. For this, you require commercial unit. No? So, you are not going to work with the tiny units, watt and second. Bigger unit. The bigger unit for power, kilowatt. Bigger unit of time, R. The commercial unit of energy is kilowatt R. Kilowatt R. One kilowatt R is defined as the amount of energy consumed by a device for working of one R. 
okay so this is this is nothing but the commercial unit that we are also using and certainly whenever there will be you know uh, any person who will visit your house in order to check that how much electrical energy is consumed at your house by your appliances they are going to check it here from this only okay from the meter itself kilowatt hour okay commercial unit we talk about right now there is a small question that we are going to do everyone an electric heater is rated 1500 watt that is nothing but the power given to you how much energy does it use in 10 hours so they are talking about the commercial energy over here this should be clear by far now okay so energy is nothing but power into time right power should be in kilowatt everyone remember this is in watt to so you have to convert 1500 by 1000 into 10 hours of course it is in hours so perfect now cancel out okay you will say 15 kilowatt hour is the answer this much is the energy consumed commercial energy consumed so yes by looking at the question you should be able to understand what they are asking okay so yes here i believe till here all the things are clear in a just i have given you your whole um, you know summary as such and i would want all of you to please share your valuable comments and certainly i'll be coming up soon thank you so much all of you and all the best